Then two nights later, that 17-year-old came back. He took Carly's body into this work yard and buried it into a pile of sand. Today, the goal will be to continue this mop-up work, to continue pushing about 100 feet into the perimeter of the fire. That's the goal of these crews right now. Another thing, let's take a look at what this fire was using for fuel. The grass in this area is very dry and brittle. And you can see that wind just take it. He went on to say we didn't win by a lot, but we won by enough. Now, Governor Romney also went on to talk about his plans once he takes on President Obama didn't even mention any of the other Republican candidates or any other upcoming races. Right here, we've got about eight inches of snow, and you think, okay, maybe my car can make it through there. Well, this would be where your left tire is, and thanks to that drifting, we're closer to about 16 inches of snow. Woo! All right, he's in, he's out, he did it. Michigan has suffered a very long period of recession. The president's policies have not gotten Michigan going again. I'm planning on, uh, on winning in Michigan on Tuesday. I think you're going to see that this is the uh, first step towards a uh, very different future. Jonathan Nelson brought his daughters out to hear Mitt Romney's version of the future. I am concerned about the national debt. I think that there has to be a better way to solve some of the nation's problems than continuing to borrow uh, money upon money. But I think that we need to go a different direction, and I think that Mitt Romney might be that answer. The rally had policy. We're going to cut spending, we're going to cap spending, and balance what we take in with what we spend. And personal stories. You know this young lady next to me? She and I used to spend a little time in Manistee, just, uh, just down the shoreline a little bit. Her parents had a cottage. But Romney always returns to dollars and cents. I also want to bring down the corporate tax rate so that we don't have all the loopholes and exemptions and special deals. Let's get the rates down, make America and make Michigan a more attractive place for businesses to come and to grow. And while the crowd ate that up, this native son didn't shy away from connecting to all of us who work and play in Michigan. And by the way, I'd be the first person in the history of the country who was president to have been born in Michigan. In Traverse City, I'm Michael Kazaborski for 9 and 10 News at 11. When you boil it down, this is a story about one missing infant, two squabbling parents, and three unaccounted for hours. My child took our daughter, and I don't know where he's at with her. Ariel Cortland, baby Kate's mother, made that call about 1.30 on the afternoon of June 29th. Her on-again, off-again boyfriend had just taken off from her apartment, allegedly with the couple's four-month-old in the back seat. The two had been fighting about giving Kate up for adoption, already raising one child, three-year-old Haley. The two young parents had apparently argued for months. Young kids in a situation that was too much. It was over their head. What are you going to do about it? They clashed about it. Other than the family and the investigators, few people are as close to this case as Mike Tannis. He's the news director at WMOM Radio in Ludington. Sean Phillips seems like your normal small-town guy. He uh, doesn't have a criminal record. He's not a hardened criminal, so to speak. So how did we get here? With Sean Phillips being paraded into court with a bulletproof vest on, accused of making his four-month-old daughter disappear. The physical evidence was what was key in the decision to charge. Um, the baby clothes being in his pocket of his cargo shorts, uh, the child's baby seat, car seat being in the trunk of his car, the, um, uh, the baby bag being in the trunk of his car. Uh, those, were all, those were the main three things that, that said, okay, child's missing. He knew where the child was. It was Prosecutor Paul Spaniola who charged Sean with kidnapping. Spaniola took some flack for his aggressive charge, but he says it was necessary and proper in the moment. And fair or not, speculation swirls around whether Ariel had a hand in her daughter's disappearance. A lot of people, I think, are just, they're just talking because, I don't know, I, I guess, I, I don't know why they do that. I didn't do anything. I don't know what else at this point to do to make you people believe. Mason County Prosecutor Paul Spaniola says everything that she's told them about June 29th consistently checks out. They had it all blocked off. And there was the yellow police tape. Just You could see it going down the whole street, barricades and cop cars. For anyone who happened upon the scene at the corner of Adams and Broadway last night, it was hard to see past the yellow tape and barricades. Inside, police were trying to figure out how a car full of women ended up crashing into a power pole and how another car ended up running into a house. This is uh, one of those incidents that's an unusual incident. It's one you don't see every day. After piecing everything together, police tell us this man, Casey Floyd, used his SUV to go after his ex-girlfriend who was riding in the other car. 
He continued to accelerate, ran into the rear of their car, drove them through the intersection, up onto the side of the road here. Police say he pushed the car full of women at high speeds about 100 feet. Shards of glass and plastic are strewn in the lawn where the car eventually crashed into a utility pole. This is a new one. Now this is where Casey Floyd ended up crashing into that house. It's about a block and a half away from the original accident. And the homeowner says, thank goodness he hit this tree first or else his SUV could have gone straight through that living room. Everybody in the house was okay. The house itself is not. Crews had to secure the wall. It's pushed in about a foot. As for Casey Floyd, he's charged with trying to kill his ex-girlfriend. People in the neighborhood say they're all lucky no one in the car or on the street was killed. It's, it's just incredible to think that that incident happened here where all these people live. It's just really kind of scary. In Mount Pleasant, I'm Michael Kazaborski reporting for 9 and 10 News. Well, stop by either one of these restaurants, Stacy and Phil, and the folks waiting on you will likely know your name. The True Neighborhood Spots, owned by local people, and they feel a sense of trust was also broken during these burglaries. At Helen's restaurant, it's Helen who's there to clean up the messes. She has stacks of paper to sort through after someone broke into her office and dumped everything on the ground while looking for cash. All this stuff is laying on the floor, and the cash register's wide open, and it's like... Uh-oh. This is the broken cash register. There wasn't a lot left in it for thieves to take, but they took something more valuable, peace of mind. Why do people do these things? It's a typical family restaurant where people come in every day. We see the same people a lot. And yeah, they, they're very upset when they hear about things like this. Down the street from Helen's is the RK restaurant. The K stands for Christy. Well, here we are trying to make a living here in, in town. and. And there's people like that that just come in and try to rob you of everything that you work hard for. The burglars destroyed this door and frame to get in. It'll probably cost Christy several hundred dollars to replace. And the police tell us the thieves tried to break into two other businesses on the strip without any luck. I can't wait till they get them, though. I cannot wait till they get them. In a show of support, RK loaned Helen's their extra cash register. They're both still serving today because they have a lot of familiar faces to feed. Just we'll have to keep making the coffee and <laughs> keep everybody happy. Police are still looking for suspects. They spent much of the morning in Remus taking evidence from both restaurants. Reporting live, I'm Michael Kazaborski, 9 and 10 News. <laughs> Parents are turning into picketers in Roscommon County. Their battle cry is SOS, save our school. The elementary school is the heart and soul of St. Helen. And we're about to lose that. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of um, tradition. And we're, we don't want to lose that. St. Helen Elementary is slated to close after this school year. It's certainly not easy to do, but it's something that we have to do. School board members say money problems in the district continue to mount. It's been kind of compounding and it just hasn't, isn't going to get any easier the longer we wait. We would look at probably a three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar savings. Could even go up as much as five hundred thousand dollars. But parents and community members who packed a Q&A session say there are alternatives to closing the school, like instituting pay-for-play sports or writing grants to install alternative energy sources, an idea that drew applause. There is money out there. It took me 35 minutes and I had a grant in my hands that would help our school having to do with solar energy, uh, turbines, uh, solar panels. We want to make sure they've looked at every option that they have. People here say they're committed to work together up to a certain point. There's privatized schools out, there's charter schools that we may be looking at, so um, those are options, but hopefully those are for later. One of the neighboring homes spared from the fire, Katie, was the Pineview Home for Boys. It's a center that houses kids in trouble with the law. And today, its staff showed the real benefit of helping a neighbor in need. Hey guys, well, welcome back. We're hanging out with Mike Rowe and the Dirty Jobs crew. And speaking of that crew, you're the one really working right now. What's going uh, on I know it. Here? You know what? Well, if, they, if, if we don't feed them every five to eight minutes, uh, it's, it's a blood sugar issue, crankiness sets in, yeah. unions. I mean, it's a nightmare. I don't know what it's like to work with a temperamental crew because yeah. Corey Adkins... No, Corey, uh, really, the, I mean, he, no, he holds it together. He's yeah. a jack of all trades, you know, master of some, yeah. so it's good. 
Is that in focus? <laughs> is it even on? Oh, good. I, I think sure. it's going pretty How's well. Iris That's looking? good. Yeah, I like it when I look beautiful in that particular angle. You know, in honor of you guys, I brought my dirtiest hat I could find. Of course, keeping with the Michigan. Well, you have to. Keeping with the Michigan theme. Yeah, why wouldn't you? That one's uh, going out to everybody back home. Help make that a little dirty. A lot of softball games in there. But well, <laughs> mine is what am I? Where am I? Today? Fish and Wildlife Service. Yeah. Department of the Interior. I thought it was worth You're... working with fish and game, but it's actually these are the feds doing oh. this work here. We better be careful what we say then. Believe me. They're, they're always watching, literally. Always they're right, careful. They're right recording. there. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're keeping an eye on, on us. They're acting casual, but believe me. That guy Mike there with his back to us. Hanging yeah. on every word, aren't you, Mike? Eyes in the back every of his head. Every word. Over there. All right, that'll be enough. Well, let, should we get to, uh, We're not exactly yeah. having lunch here. We've got a buffet line no. behind us here. No, but this is what we've been this, working on all morning. These are the, this is the reason you're here in northern Michigan. Yeah. These gorgeous little babies right here, these sea lampreys. Uh, what what the heck is the draw of these for well, you, Mike? It's you know again, it's like you guys in Michigan. You've, 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 you 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 keep that you've away seen from them me. all. You know what I mean? You've like been there and done it. But I'm yeah. telling you, like 90 percent of the people in the country are looking at this thing and going, "What kind of pit did it crawl from? And how is <laughs> it alive? And why does it want to kill me? It's like yeah. a, its mouth. It's like a it's like a little butt with teeth in it." <laughs> Would you that's, agree, Cash? I would agree. That's you know what, and that's what we're always looking for here. Yes, Cash. Got a little lamprey is. juice. That's why right we come out here so often because you never know what you're going to find. What your comments on that? What do we do with this lamprey now?